Once known as the richest man in Ireland, Sean Quinn used to have it all. He had an empire that would last a few more generations of the family line. He and his family were living the life most people dream of. His son, Sean Quinn Jr., enjoyed the same luxury. But those aren't just the two things they have in common. Turns out, the father and son duo have been racking up some crimes over the past decade. So what exactly have they been up to? Starting the first entry is the desperate move done by the older Quinn to maintain his wealth. By 2012, Sean Quinn had already filed for bankruptcy after the failure of multiple investments. While he was aware that he might lose it all, he pulled a few more tricks to have some left for himself. Before the ordered liquidation by Ireland, he tried to transfer money to offshore bank accounts of family members and family-owned businesses. The move was so obvious that authorities immediately charged him, which also landed him in jail for nine weeks. In total, he was given 30 court orders, demanding to reverse back his overseas schemes and other asset-stripping measures. He wasn't initially ordered to serve jail time, but there were concerns that the money and assets may be gone for good. So he was eventually sentenced to nine weeks in jail. This was pretty much the start of a long battle between Ireland's legal system and Quinn's camp. It was clear that it was more than just bankruptcy at that point. The apple doesn't really fall far from the tree. Like his father the year before, Sean Quinn Jr. was also arrested. Now, you might think it's also because of a court order due to asset stripping. Well, it's an entirely different story this time. The whole thing happened in an eventful train ride to Dublin. He was reportedly drunk and verbally abusing other passengers. Naturally, the people complained about his behavior to the train authorities. They then decided it was best to just pull the man off the ride. But the drunken Sean Quinn Jr. had other plans in mind. Just as authorities were about to escort him out, he quickly went to the train toilet, where he locked himself up. Passengers described the incident as being ridiculous, especially for a man like Sean Quinn Jr. Authorities were eventually able to open the toilet door and pull him out of the train. In total, the incident lasted for around 20 minutes. He was arrested in handcuffs for his behavior and was taken to the nearby police station. Luckily for him, he was only given a caution and no actual charges were filed this time. Sean Quinn Jr. then proceeded to Dublin in another mode of transportation. It would certainly be unwise for him to take another train ride after that event. He was asked multiple times by journalists for a statement, but chose to remain silent following the altercation. Following the Quinn family's downfall were the loud protests from their supporters. Quinn's group of companies was known to be responsible for the economic boom in his hometown of Derelin. Sean Quinn, through his businesses, provided jobs and financial stability for the people. This is why it's no surprise that they rallied behind him after his empire was seized by the government. Just days after this, at least 100 people showed up in one of Quinn's buildings to give a letter of protest. It wasn't your normal delivery since it came with much force and violence. Loyal supporters of Quinn forcibly went past security to gain entry to the building. A dump truck was even used to crash the front gate, which blocked the entrance. Other supporters took roles in sending out letters to government officials to complain about how Sean Quinn was being treated. It was chaos for the affected towns, with power cables being cut regularly and several buildings and houses burnt intentionally. The area was soon dubbed Quinn County. The new leaders of Quinn's seized companies were threatened and attacked. One of them suffered an arson attack on his car, which was done by two unidentified men. Later on, two higher-ups received an unknown call that told them to leave or be killed. Sean Quinn strongly denies any form of responsibility for these threats and attacks. He remains firm in his stance that these were carried out by his supporters and not him. While he may deny this, there is indeed a real possibility that he ordered these protests. These attacks continued in 2014, two years after the bankruptcy and demise of the Quinn Empire. At this point, it wasn't just the new leaders of the companies that were being attacked. Even competitors also suffered the same fate. This comes after they would try to merge with the former Quinn companies. Just as both sides were about to strike a deal for a merger, the other party would unexpectedly back out with no reason. The new executives believe this is a result of intimidation tactics by Quinn supporters or even Sean Quinn himself. Further, during the previous year, there were already reports that Sean Quinn hired an infamous gangster named Cyril McGuinness, or simply Dublin Jimmy. The man was notorious for being a violent criminal who had no regard for the law. His convictions include theft, robbery, assault, and illegal dumping of toxic waste. 
It was rumoured that when Dublin Jimmy came out of prison, he immediately became one of Quinn's men, hired to do the dirty work. This included possible gun attacks and other violent means. By mid-2014, the total number of attacks was already 70. Like previous statements, Sean Quinn merely denied any involvement. Supporters also remained silent and had no interest in dropping names, which is a true testament to their loyalty. Perhaps one of the worst incidents that happened in the region following Quinn's downfall was the kidnapping of Kevin Lunny. He was one of the people who used to work for Sean Quinn. Lunny, at the time of the kidnapping, was the operations director of QIH, which gained control over some of Quinn's assets after getting funded from US-based groups. It seems that Quinn and his supporters thought of this act as a betrayal on Lunny's part. On September 17, 2019, masked men took Kevin Lunny from his firm in our home. They went as far as slashing his face with a knife and hitting his legs several times. They also slashed his fingernails and poured bleach over them. As if this wasn't enough, the men also carved QIH on his chest, sending out a message to leave or to suffer even more in the next few years. Lunny was then left with a broken leg and dumped on a nearby road. Once again, Sean Quinn denied any involvement in the abduction and beating. While Sean Quinn may continue to absolve himself from these attacks, it's undeniable that his influence remains a huge factor for his loyal supporters. He may not have ordered them, but his very existence is enough for his Quinn County to revolt for him. And it looks like his son, Sean Quinn Jr., is another force authorities have to deal with. So that's it for today's video. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this episode. If you are interested in more videos like this, check out this related video on another famous person's downfall. I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.